you, you spend your must, eh? Yeah, because I won't remember it. Uh, well, what about Prime Minister, what are your impressions of today's great event? Well, they're many and varied, but I have a prepared formal statement, which I think perhaps I could read, because that would put in short compass uh, the general impressions that I have. And this is the statement. Uh, this, the first landing of man on the moon, is a success which excites the wonder and admiration of us all. The United States has achieved a great and peaceful triumph for mankind generally. All Australians congratulate the United States, the three astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Edward Aldrin, and Michael Collins, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and those people all around the world who have been associated with this Apollo mission. Australia is proud to be playing a part in this adventure through its tracking stations, through the Parkes radio telescope, and through other facilities. This moon landing will begin a new era in space science and technology, and it demonstrates in the most dramatic way what man can do by the application of advanced technology for peaceful uses. We marvel at the high courage and the skill of the astronauts and at the scientific genius which made this adventure possible. These astronauts have dared dangerously and successfully. And they have carried out man's urge to go always a little further, to explore and know the previously unknown, to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. There is no time more memorable than a first time, no triumph greater than one sought and achieved in peace, and the world is the richer because of this epic journey. To these men on the moon, we say thank you, Godspeed, and a safe return home. Prime Minister, as a former a fighter part of yourself of only 25 years ago, you were flying hurricanes. What, what do they do? 30, 350 miles an hour? Well, that's what they used to say in the papers, but in point of fact, they used to uh, cruise at about 180. Uh, they would do 350 for about uh, 30 seconds before the engines blew up, and this is why they used to say <laughs> they did this. Could you possibly imagine at that time that you would uh, see a man on the moon in 25 years' time? I suppose that I could have imagined it myself, but this was because I was a devotee of science fiction, and it didn't seem impossible that man would go further and further into space. But one couldn't, one couldn't do other than have faith that it would happen. You couldn't expect that it would happen that long ago. We weren't allowed to take a sound camera into the uh, tracking station for technical reasons. What did you say to the staff in the tracking station here at Honeysuckle Creek? Well, I asked them what all the little wiggly green lines were and uh, what the various noises coming out of uh, bits and pieces of the equipment were uh, and uh, got answers which I wouldn't pretend thoroughly to understand. I think perhaps the best way of saying what I felt when I was in there was that I was blinded by science. <laughs> Did you get up early this morning to watch the landing on the moon by television? No, I'm afraid I didn't. I, I wish I had, but I didn't. I'll see it anyway. Prime Minister, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Prime Minister, what were your impressions of today's great events? As a former fighter pilot yourself of only 25 years ago when you were flying hurricanes that could do, what, what was it, 350 miles an hour, could you have ever imagined that only a quarter of a century later men would be flying to the moon? We weren't allowed to take a sound camera into the tracking station here at Honeysuckle Creek for technical reasons. What did you say to the staff while, while you were making your inspection? Did you get up early this morning to watch the landing on the moon by television? Prime Minister, thank you.